the LCD TV I fixed today is a Sharp model number LC135H1U. This one was a little bit challenging. I noticed when I plugged it in only half the screen was lit up. I think it was the top half that was lit and the bottom half was dark. So I knew it had something to do with my backlight. So naturally I started by checking the transformers, the inverter transformers that is. And the first thing I always do is I like to take my ring tester and check across the primary for rings. Now surprisingly, I wasn't able to get these things to ring before, but now they're ringing just fine. When I pulled them out of circuit, they weren't getting a reading, and I don't understand that, but you can see on my meter here, at least I hope it's showing up on the video, you can see that I am getting a, a ring. So, when I figured the transformers were probably all right, the next thing that I did was I checked the transistors that were driving the transformers, and I, I wasn't able to tell if these transistors were bad or not because they had an unusual reading. Now, normally when you're checking a transistor using your diode check function on your meter, you're going to get a reading in two different directions, base to emitter or base to collector. But in this case, I was only getting a reading from one across one junction, so I didn't know if it was open or what it was. And it turned out that was just the characteristic of that particular transistor. It didn't t check like I expected it to. But anyway, uh, what it turned out to be, uh, thanks to Mike's TV case histories, I found a a model that was almost identical to this one, and it mentioned a couple of these polypropylene capacitors, which I couldn't even test on my capacitor checker. Uh, they have unusual uh, markings on them that are a little bit tricky to figure out what they mean. For example, this one says uh, 154J, and that's actually a 0 0.10 microfarad capacitor, so it's got a very low value there. Anyway, uh, one of them was bad and it was causing the half the screen not to light up, so I just ordered a couple new ones. And I ordered, uh, instead of going with a 250 volt, I went with a 450 volt. A little beefier. And even though that fixed it, in the process of checking um, some other capacitors just to see if everything else is okay here, I found, let me see, I guess it was five or six electrolytics that were bad. And I'm going to point them out here in case you happen to get this model. We've got, uh, let me see. For starters, we've got C403, which is a 220 microfarad at 16 volts. And your, the two capacitors I changed are right here. That would be C407 and C431. Again, that's a 0.15 microfarad at 250 volt. We've got C402, 100 microfarad at 16 volts. Here we're looking at C541, 220 microfarad at 16 volts. This one here is C543, 220 microfarad at 16 volts. And this one is C505, 220 microfarad at 10 volts. And the last one I replaced was C603, 100 microfarad at 10 volts. Now I find it a real nuisance having to check so many capacitors when I actually fix a problem just by changing these two, but again, I didn't want the customer to bring it back in a, another couple of months. I want it to last a while. A uh, little tip I'm going to pass on here. You might find it helpful. I realize there are different uh, types of ESR capacitor checkers out there, but my particular model has a nice function. It's got these little tweezers that you can use to check across the leads on the uh, capacitors. And I notice a lot of times I'm able to access the leads from the top of the board, which saves the time of having to flip it over. For example, I can put it across here, and I'm actually getting a reading from the top of the board. So that can be a real time saver. I was thinking of making my own custom tip that would sort of slide underneath, because not all the leads are accessible on, on every one of these capacitors. But, but if you can check it from the top, it can certainly save you a lot of time. And the other thing I'd recommend is if you're checking like glitch there. What I was going to say, a lot of times when you've got just a whole slew of capacitors, it can be such a nuisance to check them all. What I usually do is I'll, I'll mainly look at the look for the capacitors that are maybe 50 microfarads on up, and I'll make sure those are good, because these decoupling capacitors are not as critical. I mean, don't get me wrong, they can cause problems too, but they're not as likely to go out. It's generally the, the larger capacitors that I've seen becoming problematic. I need to correct a slight error I made in the 
first part of this video, I mentioned these two capacitors that go bad, and their location was C407 and C431. I mistakenly said that they were 0.1 microfarad, when in, in fact they were 0.15 microfarad. So make sure you get that right. 